Hi and welcome to Down the Shed. So on my shelf you will see the LGV PCV DVD ROM that we're going to be looking at. Driving Goods Vehicles Official DVSA Guide. Official DVSA Theory Test for Drivers of Large Vehicles. The Official Highway Code and Know Your Traffic Signs Official Edition Department for Transport. Now the only revision I have done for these theory tests is this official DVSA theory test which according to I can't remember the youtuber but I don't want to promote him anyway because he's a yeah at his medical he got given this book which I'll be completely disappointed about because I spent 20 quid on that but it was a great help to the course that I've been doing so far I've had to do a load of uh, classroom online classroom work so this has been a great help Plus, having read this book and used it to revise the theory test, I have achieved on average 97% on my mock tests. I've done 100% on three of them. Uh, the average is 95, 96, I would say personally. I've had a 94%, which I was really disappointed about. Out of 100 questions, your pass mark is 85%, 85 questions. So uh, let's crack on and I'll do a theory, mock theory test on the computer and I'll do it live so we all play along together. So without much more than ado, I shall set the camera up onto the computer screen and we shall do our theory test. Now you get an hour and 55 minutes in which to do your 100 questions. Personally, I don't see why it should take more than 30 minutes. I don't review the questions once I've answered them. As far as I'm concerned, my first answer is the right answer. Um, if I want to change a question, then basically you're uh, questioning yourself, in which case you didn't answer it or you weren't aware of the answer in the first place. So if it's wrong, it's wrong. If it's right, it's right. Like I said, according to the uh, data on the... Uh, computer it's given me an average of 97 percent i want to walk out of that test center with 100 percent on my theory i just want to pass the hazard i want 100 percent on my theory if i get 99 percent i'll be disappointed i got one wrong if i get 95 percent i'll be disappointed that i got five wrong really disappointed 97 to 100 percent will be happy enough but or 97 to 99 percent i'll be happy enough but i want that 100 percent mark so let's do one of these theory tests and see how we go. Okay, so this is the DVD ROM, complete LGV PC V theory and hazard. I haven't done any of the highway code training on this. I just gotta log in. Secret source. So as you can see, my streak up here, progress over time. Yeah, this computer is so slow. I've got a crappy laptop that I put a Windows 7 in. So uh, CPC case study isn't on this DVD. You have to buy a separate one. Not installed. There you go but we want to sit a mock test, uh, test simulation, and we should go for an official style test because I've gone through most of the preset tests. What does this sign mean? Water across the road. What must you do when driving under the rules for domestic driver's hours? Oh, that's a good one. Keep a written record of hours worked. Is that all? Keep a written record of driving time only. What can result from overloading an axle?
reduced braking efficiency. How can vehicle breakdowns be reduced? By regular, by regular servicing. You're driving a lorry in a busy town. A driver pulls out in front of you and you have to brake hard. What should you do? Stay calm and accept the error. What does the flashing amber light mean at a pelican crossing? Give way to pedestrians already on the crossing. You're driving a lorry with a maximum authorised mass of more than 7.5 tonnes along a three-lane motorway. When may you use the right-hand lane? When the left-hand lane is closed. Which of these loads needs to be transported at a controlled temperature? Frozen foods. When must you take extra care if you're driving a vehicle more than 3 metres, 10 feet high? When driving under overhead cables. What could happen if you overfill your engine with oil? Some gaskets might be damaged. Before starting driving, which of the following should you complete on the centre field of your tachograph chart? The starting point of your day's journey. I'm not going to uh, highlight all four answers. Details of the goods carried. Because it would take too long. What action should you take if there are flashing amber lights under a school warning sign? Reduce speed until you're clear of the area. At a junction, you see this sign partly covered by snow. What does it mean? The reason that the stop sign is octagonal is a so when it's covered by snow you actually do know it's a stop sign but also fun fact the stop sign is the only sign that is internationally recognized every country in the world uses an octagonal stop sign so you, you know regardless of what's covering it if you can see the shape you know it's a stop sign You're loading a curtain-sided vehicle. What are the curtains for? Protection from the weather. What should you do if you're feeling tired but there's nowhere to stop safely? Ensure a supply of fresh air. I'll give you the other options on this one. Increase your speed to find a stopping place more quickly. Keep changing speed to improve your concentration. Gently tap the steering wheel. So it's advised that if you're feeling tired to turn the heating down, open the windows to get nice cold fresh air into the cab. So a lot of these questions you're going to get on your theory test are quite obvious. You're driving a high-sided vehicle in very windy conditions. Where should you avoid travelling? Across suspension bridges. What's most likely to cause tiredness? Having insufficient brakes from driving. You're driving an articulated lorry. What should you do when you see this sign? Drive past the sign because it doesn't apply to you. It's a bus only. So not lorries, not cars. You're driving in town and see these lights flashing. What would you expect to see ahead? 
children crossing the road. It's already given us a clue in a previous question. High-sided vehicles can be affected by side wind. On which type of road is this most likely? Open roads. How can you help to ease traffic congestion? Plan journeys to avoid busy times. So we're 20% through. This is question 21 and we've used seven minutes. Now I normally do it a lot quicker, but obviously recording this with the camera, highlighting answers, it's taken me longer. But you get an hour 55 and like I say, I don't know why you'd need that long. You're driving an articulated tanker on a straight road. How will the liquid load affect the vehicle as you brake to a stop? It will try to push the vehicle forward. What will happen if you follow a regular vehicle maintenance schedule? It will reduce breakdowns. What's the first thing you should check before moving to the right? The offside mirror. What must you do if you're involved in a traffic incident? Stop at the si Stop at the scene. How must spare sheets and ropes be carried on your trailer? Tied down securely. You're driving along a motorway and see this sign. What does it mean? There's a long uphill gradient ahead. What's the most likely cause if your steering starts to feel heavy? Faulty power steering. You have to drive onto a muddy building site. Why should you switch on your diff lock? To make the wheels less likely to spin. What's the first thing you should check before moving to the left? The near side mirror. How will a school crossing patrol signal you to stop? By displaying a stop sign. What action would you take when elderly people are crossing the road? Be patient and allow them to cross in their own time. Although... Rev the engine to let them know that you're waiting. Is more. Fun. What will a correctly adjusted air deflector do? Save fuel. Your vehicle is more than 3 meters, 9 feet 10 inches high. Where is this information displayed? In the driver's cab. Any over 3 meters must have a cab uh, sign. Your lorry has been fitted with wind deflectors. How will they affect your vehicle? They'll reduce the wind resistance. Under EU rules, you can drive for a maximum of nine hours a day. On how many days each week can this be extended to ten hours? Two days. Your vehicle is fitted with air brakes. What does it mean if a brake warning light shows when you've just started the engine? Low air pressure. Why must these road markings be kept clear? To allow an unobstructed view of the area. Any zigzag lines, you do not park on them. Fix penalty notice, including white ones around uh, traffic crossings or pedestrian crossings, etc. Unlike in Tidworth. Come on. To allow an unobstructed view of the area.
What's the purpose of the oil filter? To collect metal particle. To collect metal particles from the oil. When can you travel on the hard shoulder of a motorway? When signs show that you can. What does controlling goods vehicle drivers hours help to improve? Road safety. <clears throat> you hold a full category C license. What does this entitle you to tow? A trailer up to 750 kilograms. How should you let other vehicles overtake when you're driving a slow-moving vehicle along a narrow road? Pull in when you can. Bloody tractors. A horse rider is in the left-hand lane approaching a roundabout. What should you expect the rider to do? Go in any direction. Cyclists and horse riders often find it safer, and I ride horses, to use the left-hand lane to turn right. What should you do if the brake air pressure warning light comes on while you're driving? Stop and get help without delay. What does this sign mean? The distance to a tunnel. When should your trailer be fitted with a kingpin or drawbar lock? Hmm. When it's being driven abroad. When it's being driven on a motorway. When it's being used partially loaded. When it's left unattended. Obviously that one, because if you read the question again. When should your trailer be fitted with a kingpin or drawbar lock? It's the trailer, so you don't want the trailer getting nicked. What does this sign mean? Emergency diversion route for motorway traffic. When are air deflectors most effective? When there's a headwind. What should you do as you approach these roadworks? Check your mirrors. You're making a journey with a co-driver. When the other person is driving, how should you show this time? As a break in daily driving. You're, you're about to pass this car. What's the main hazard you should be aware of? The driver's door may suddenly open. Your lorry has a crane fitted. You're loading very heavy items. What should you do when you feel that the ropes or straps may break? Use chains and tensioners. <coughs> You're driving a lorry weighing more than 7.5 tonnes on a single carriageway road in England. What does this sign mean? Maximum speed, 50 miles per hour. And remember, speed limits are limits, they're not targets. You're approaching a green traffic light and are going straight ahead. What should you do when the traffic ahead beyond the junction has stopped and is queuing? Go forward if your vehicle will clear the junction. You've just started the engine. What must you do if the brake air pressure warning light is showing? Keep the parking brake on. It may just be building up pressure. 
I might get that one wrong, it might be. Report it as a fault. Switch your engine off. Engage the clutch. I'm going to stick with my initial thought, like I said earlier. I don't see the point of the review unless you've flagged one or two questions. Because you're only going to question your own answers. Your vehicle is fitted with an anti-lock braking system. When should you check that it's working properly? Before every journey. Dash warning lights. How can you help to protect the environment? By using bypasses and avoiding town centres. By driving faster to reduce travelling time. By filling your fuel tank with red diesel fuel. Don't do that one. By leaving your engine running in traffic jams. That one can be classed as illegal if you're stopped for more than a few minutes. By using bypasses and avoiding town centres. What can cause unnecessary pollution to the environment? Poorly maintained vehicles. So we're 60% in. What does this road sign mean? No goods vehicles over 7.5 tonnes maximum authorised mass. So that's 60% done, and we've used 18 minutes. You're driving in fast-moving traffic along a motorway. What should you do if there's a stationary queue of traffic ahead? Switch on your hazard warning lights. You're following a motorcyclist along a potholed road. How should you adjust your driving to take account of this situation? Give them extra room. Give them extra room. Where can the axle weight limits be found? On the vehicle plate. Usually on the glove box or the passenger door card. Your vehicle breaks down on the hard shoulder of a motorway. What should you do if you decide to use your mobile phone to call for help? Check your location from the marker posts on the left. Always try to use the emergency telephone as it helps emergency services locate you quicker. You've stopped at a Pelican Crossing. What should you do if the lights have changed to green, but a disabled person is still crossing? Give way to them. Your engine catches fire. What should you do before attempting to put the fire out? Oh, I like this one. Drive to the nearest fire station. Shut off the fuel supply. You're overtaking a motorcycle in windy conditions. Why should you check your near side mirror? To check your road position. Which ancillary equipment will cause the greatest increase in fuel consumption? And we all know that. Come on. Air conditioning causes a 15% increase in fuel consumption. Which road users are most likely to be affected by the turbulence created by large vehicles travelling at speed? Drivers towing caravans. Yeah, stuff them. You're approaching traffic lights. Only the red light is showing. Which series of lights will show next? So the traffic light sequence is red, red, amber, green, amber, red. Red and amber, then green. 
What should you do if you notice that two wheel nuts are missing from one of the wheels on your vehicle? Park and phone for assistance. Or steal some of another lorry. What does this warning light on the instrument panel mean? Low oil pressure. You're on a motorway. What does it mean when a red cross is displayed above the hard shoulder? You shouldn't use this lane as a running lane. You're driving along a motorway in thick fog at night. The reflective studs are red on your left and white on your right. Which lane are you in? So the studs are red on the left, white for uh, lane markers and amber on the inside or by the central road. The left hand lane. What should you do if you feel tired after driving for two and a half hours? Stop as soon as it's safe to do so. So your 45 minute taco break can be split into a 15 minute and a 30 minute break. So after two and a half hours, take a 15 minute break. Little tips along the way. You're driving a large vehicle in a straight line. When is it most stable? During gentle acceleration. At a driver and vehicle standards agency DVSA roadside check, your vehicle is found to have serious defects and you may no longer use it. Who will DVSA share this information with? The traffic commissioner. And both you and your employer can get into trouble, so make sure you do your daily walk round checks. And don't drive a defective vehicle. Which type of fire extinguisher shouldn't be used on flammable liquids? Water, red. What should you consider having on your vehicle to combat theft? Roof markings. It makes it easier for the police to identify your vehicle from a heavy chopper. You're waiting at a T-junction. What should you do if you see a vehicle is coming from the right with its left indicator flashing? Wait until the vehicle starts to turn in. He may not turn, he might have just left that blinker going. You're driving a slow moving vehicle on a narrow winding road. What should you do to let other vehicles overtake you? Stop in a safe place. What's the main cause of a lorry shedding its load? Driving too fast. Driving in wet weather. Driving over a level crossing. Driving on motorways. So as you can see there, that could be, you know, fairly obvious question. There's only one obvious answer. What's the purpose of green and yellow fluorescent studs on a motorway? They mark the lanes in a contraflow system. What danger should you be most aware of if you're driving close to the curb in a busy shopping area? Now I did a council inspired driving course in a seven half ton lorry on behalf of my employers. And this was one of the things I mentioned to him that he was actually quite pleased about. The near side mirror striking the heads of pedestrians. He asked why I drove so close to the centre of the road along busy areas and I said I didn't want to hit pedestrians with my mirror. You're driving a lorry along a motorway. You notice that you're losing tread from one of your tyres. What should you do? Stop on the hard shoulder and phone for assistance. A bus 
bus has stopped at a bus stop ahead of you. What should you do if its right-hand indicator is flashing? Slow down and give way if it's safe to do so. You're driving a high-sided vehicle on a motorway. Where should you be especially aware of the effects of side wind? Across viaducts. What helps you to become a fuel-efficient driver? Hmm. Avoiding block changing. Accelerating rapidly. Being aware of hazards. Using air conditioning. Now I'm I'm cut up between avoid block changing because I'm not sure what it means. But you should miss gears where possible. So being aware of hazards would help you be a no, I'm gonna go with block changing. I think it's be aware of hazards though. I'm in two minds on this one. I'm going to flag that. What should you do if you see a vehicle too close behind when you're driving in traffic on the motorway? Increase your distance from the vehicle in front. I'd be really guided if I get 99% and that one question wrong. You're at the scene of an incident. What would suggest someone is suffering from shock? Rapid shallow breathing. You're driving a large vehicle. How does its size and design affect the blind spots? It will have more blind spots than smaller vehicles. You're delivering boxes of chilled food to a supermarket. What specific training would you need? Hygiene procedures. ADR procedures. ADR is for hazardous goods. What can seriously affect your concentration while driving? Tiredness. Where should you stand when using a motorway emergency telephone? Facing the oncoming traffic. So you can see if some twat's going to hit you. Why should you be especially aware of parked cars when you're driving at night? They can park without lights. I've not seen this question before. There are more of them. The drivers may be drunk. They're more likely to move off. Where in particular should you look out for motorcyclists? At a road junction. What additional training do you need before transporting frozen foods? I think we've already seen this one. Hygiene procedures. Your vehicle is fitted with an air-assisted hydraulic braking system. What would warn you that the vacuum pump isn't working? The brake pedal feels hard when pressed. What should you do when passing sheep on a road? Drive very slowly. Which of the following is important when you're getting out of a lorry cab? Using the mirrors. So we'll review that flag question. What helps you to become a fuel efficient driver? I'm going to go with being aware of hazards. And we got one question wrong. So let's have a look at what question that was. Okay, so 
I put to check your rope position, thinking that you don't want to slam into them. And the correct answer was to see if the rider is in control. To see if the rider is in control of their motorcycle. So, just having read the official DBSA theory test book, this one. If you read this book well and read it properly, it's got loads of tags in it because I used it for answers and information for my answers in my uh, online course with the company that I've been dealing with. Uh, just doing these mock tests, that's a 99%. And we did it in, what, 30, 32 minutes? You get an hour and 55 minutes. And as you can see, most of the questions are common sense. Some of them will catch you out if you haven't done your homework. But the pass mark's 85%. So even if you haven't done your homework, I can't see how you could fail it, to be honest. So 99%, I'll take that all day long. There you go, one wrong. 13 of the 14 questions were asked from the category, the road correctly. So that's, uh, that's my progress over time. As you can see, it's virtually up at sort of 96, 97%. I'm trying to find let's have a look at progress there you go progress chart and there's one dip there which was 94 percent and there's up here these are all 100 percenters and 99 percent so let's have a look at am i ready for my test Observations based on nine mock tests. Overall test pass rate is 100%, 100% in the last three mock tests. I've done 900 test questions. Total number of questions answered correctly, 877, 97%. Total number answered incorrectly, 23, 3%. Shortest time to answer, two seconds. Longest time to answer, 228 seconds. I'd obviously gone to make a drink in the middle of the test. I don't think you'll be allowed to do that. <laughs> Lol. Average time to answer correctly, 13 seconds. Average time to answer incorrectly, 1 second. Average time to answer any questions, 13 seconds. So there you go. 100 questions at 13 seconds a question. You don't need 55 minutes, let alone an hour and 55. So if you're doing your LGV or PCV theory tests, good luck. Uh, although if you've read that book or if you've done one of these DVDs enough, you shouldn't need luck. Um, that's my little mock test just for uh, demonstration purposes. Like the video, subscribe to the channel and I may do a hazard perception one tomorrow. I don't know yet, but if I do, I'll fail it because the hazard perception on this DVD are rubbish. If I can get my other DVD back off my mate, I'll do one on that. Um, car drivers have to do 14 clips. Lorry, P Lorry and PCV drivers have to do 19 clips. So like I said, like the, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Totally.